Greetings aspiring coders. Today we are embarking on an exhilarating journey into the coding cosmos. Our compass is pointing towards the flood depth exercise on codility. Now, this isn't just about calculating water levels. It's a voyage into the heart of algorithms and data structures, and we are going to break this down line by line. Understanding and mastering exercises like the flood depth isn't just about easing interviews. It's about honing the problem-solving skills that employers value. So whether you're preparing for a coding interview or just striving to become a better programmer, mastering exercises on a platform like Codility is a significant step forward. So grab your coding gear, buckle up, and let's strengthen those skills into becoming a better programmer in order for you to land that dream job. what you will gain from this exercise. Enhanced employability, greater coding efficiency, portfolio expansion, array handling proficiency, and optimized data organization. The gray area is the rock floor described by the array A above, and the blue area with dashed lines represents the water filling the low-lying areas with maximum possible volume. Thus blocks three and five have a water depth of two while blocks 2, 4, 7, and 8 have a water depth of 1. Therefore, the maximum water depth of this area is 2. This is a matter of moving left and right to determine the highest and lowest of the rock formation. In other words, here's the key, it's all mins and maxes. To break it down, it's simply storing the numbers, or levels, retrieving the counts, or subtractions, and then returning the highest one. Now let's break it all the way down by exploring the five major pieces of this puzzle one by one. It's the look you need under the hood, so to speak, that will help you write your own program. Once you master these five pieces, you can then practice on how you want them to fit in your program in order for them to run with the greatest efficiency. To move across the array, we need to iterate through the range of A, starting at the second number, hence the 1, all the way through the length or len. We're comparing the number to the right and then reassigning that number if it's bigger. We can do this by using the built-in max function, which makes it really easy. Let's run it in the visualizer. This is now our left array, and when we print it, we can see it in comparison to our original array. Time to go back and iterate our array to the left, but we have to go left a little differently than we would going right. For this example, we're going to use our original array, but reassign it to a new variable b strictly for educational purposes. What I mean by that is we wouldn't have to do this in our finished program. This is just to show you how to iterate over an array going from right to left in the opposite direction of what we just did. First, we'll need to initiate a variable that contains the very last integer in the array, and in our snippet of code, we will use the insert function to put new integers in it if they are greater than the previous integer in our array. Are we creating a new array? Yes. Is that efficient? No, but this is just to show you the gears of the program that we will write shortly. Now we can iterate through B in reverse, starting at the second to last number, all the way to the beginning, moving right to left. We will then insert, not append, our assigned max numbers going to the left for each integer from our B array into our new array called left. Let's print. Amazingly enough, at this point, we've done the majority of the heavy lifting. We now have our original array, our right array, and our left array. We're almost there. Second to last step is to take our original array and subtract it from the minimum number in the right and left array and produce a result. For a refresher, this infographic here will show that the lower number of the two arrays are marked in green, and those green numbers are what the numbers in our original array 
will subtract from. In order to do this, we can create a new array named min array and going xy for xy in our left and right arrays using zip. Now hold on to the zip function because lastly, we will use the same function in a new final array that we will call result array. Subtract our min array from our original array and then just simply print the max of that result. Voila! Now that you can see every piece of this puzzle, how would you write your program to pass this exercise? If you have these five pieces, how would you arrange them in your code? Could you do it in one line? Here's my program, not running Codility yet. I took those pieces and made my puzzle by establishing my left and right, iterating through the array to the right and then to the left, and then I created my minimum array that will result in a return of the max of the zipped arrays. Is it efficient? Most likely not, but it is pretty readable as you can see and read exactly what's going on. So let's throw it in the visualizer and take one last quick look before we submit it. Before I actually submit it, I do want to throw in one little precaution against edge cases where there wouldn't be enough spaces to hold water. To do this, I add in an if statement that if the length of A was less than three, it just returns zero. Then I just put the rest of the code under an else statement. Okay, let's submit our test. Three days later. All right, I am screen recording. Three, two, one. Let's start. I already have it copied, so all I have to do is paste it in here. Let's start the test. Nervous. Yes, I want to start. Let's put it on Python. Confirm. Let's not print. run our code. <sighs> Let's run it. Let's run it. Let's, let's submit. Where do we submit? I have to look under my camera. Bruh. Ooh, 58%. I usually get 10 or 30, so 58% is pretty good. I like that. What did I fail? Ooh, timed out on the big ones. Okay, I am not upset about this at all, but definitely going to try for 100 because that's just who I am. I have to get 100% every time. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you had a great time. I know that I did. If you would like to watch the journey on getting 100% score on this Codility exercise, come on over and join me on my Patreon page and join my community there for a low monthly subscription rate of just a cup of coffee. Over there, we'll go through how to score 100% on this exercise. And I know you're not going to want to miss it. So link is below. I'll see you over there. And thanks again for watching.